He's coming for his tea. We're having chicken, and he's having the parson's nose. <laughs> well, that'll do, Jimmy. Bad enough him coming round with your jokes as well. Oh, I'd better go and have a word with her. I'll come with you, Grandad, to give you what they call, um, uh, uh immoral support. <laughs> Hello, ma'am. My Grandad would like a word in your shell light -like logo. I'm busy with the tea, Father. What is it you want this time? Uh, uh, where's my clean socks, Pat? Oh, no, not again. You're hopeless, Father. Pat, where's my socks? Pat, where's my shirt? Pat, I cannot find my tie. Very good, ma'am. <laughs> now do our Susan. It's about time somebody did. <laughs> now look, my lad. When the vicar gets here, you keep out of trouble. Oh, don't worry, ma'am. I won't annoy the vicar. Not with the autumn fair coming up. That goes for you, Grandad. Don't go telling him any of them stories you hear at the pub. If, if you can't think of anything to say, sing a hymn. Now, you just be quiet. It's bad enough having my Sunday afternoon disturbed without your cheeky remarks. But where's my clean socks? In the sideboard drawer where they always are. Right, I'll be out of your way then. Oh, you're in here, Mother. Uh, careful what you say, Susan. That'll do, Father. What is it, Susan? Uh, are you busy, Mother? Oh, no. Apart from boiling the eggs, slicing the chicken, washing the lettuce, brewing the tea, cutting the bread and laying the table, I'm completely at a loose end. What do you want? I thought perhaps you'd iron my blouse for me. Warm the iron up, ma'am. I'll do it while she's wearing it. <laughs> Shut up. Look, Susan, surely you can iron your own blouse for one. Well, you do it so much better than I do, Mother. Oh, yes, Mother. You're a positive wizard with your flat iron. <laughs> You've always got smashing creases in my football knickers. <laughs> you just be quiet. I'm fed up with you. All of you. Uh, I'll help you with the tea, Mother, if you're busy. Oh, thank you very much. The unpaid, overworked skivvy could use a bit of help. Can I do anything to help, Mum? Yes, go on and play. <laughs> oh, answer the door, Jimmy. That'll be the vicar. Take him into your granddad in the living room. Right, Mum. <coughs> now to have a giggle with our man at St. Fanny's. <laughs> <laughs> I'll soon get him going. <laughs> he likes my jokes. Ah, oh, Master James, may I come in? Just a minute. Tall, good looking, long black cloak, a do gooder. Yes, come in, Batman. <laughs> Batman. Really, James, you're incorrigible. No, I'm not. I'm CV like you. <laughs> well, all right, Jimmy. Uh, come in the living room, Vicar. Oh, thank you, Mr. Sinclair. Peace be upon this house. And the same to you. Up at the vicarage. <laughs> Be quiet, Jimmy. Hey, come and sit down, Vicar. Thank you. Nice to see you again, Vicar. Yes, yes, it's very nice to be here. Yes, I always enjoy visiting the Clitheroes. And there's something I always look forward to most eagerly. You mean a slice of my mum's chocolate cake? No, no, James. It's the pleasure of seeing you all living together so happily. Like the nest of chirruping birds, the mother hen and her young brood, the happy sheep and lambs, grazing peacefully in the fold. Grandad, he's been listening to the archers again. <laughs> no, 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 James. What I am trying to say is that whenever I see you all, I see a truly contented family. Are you sure you've got your eye specs on? To me. <laughs> Ah, oh, the boy's humour is limitless. I <laughs> know. And I can play the mouth organ as well. <laughs> oh, there you are, Vicar. Are they looking after you? Yes, ma'am. We were just talking about uh, truly happy families. <laughs> like ours. <laughs> oh, yes. It's all sweetness and harmony here, Vicar. It's always a pleasure to watch the individual members of the family caring for each other and coming to each other's aid in times of difficulty. Oh, yes, we're all like that here, aren't we, Father? Oh, uh, I, I, I suppose we are. If I can help somebody, <laughs> I'd like to behave yourself. Yeah. 
<laughs> yes, it must be a terrible thing to live in an unhappy family. Indeed, indeed. Especially when the cause is someone taking up a life of dishonesty and crime. Uh, not that this sort of thing is entirely surprising when one considers the influence of outside pressures. Uh, take, for instance, those old gangster films. Uh, there was such a film on television only last Friday night, I believe. Who is smashing five murders? I've seen it. <laughs> Really, James, I saw it. Did you? Fancy a vicar watching a thing like that. <laughs> Hope you had your curtains drawn. No, no, James, you said I seen it. No, I said I seen it. <laughs> I didn't even know you had a telly. No, 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 James, I'm trying to say you mustn't say I seen it. Oh, you don't want the bishop to know. <laughs> Granddad, not a word in church about the vicar watching the gangster film. I seen it, but the vicar didn't. James, what on earth are you talking about? That film, what I seen on the telly. What you seen on the telly? That film I keep telling you about. Oh, don't some reverend's mothers have them. <laughs> but your tea isn't ready yet. But you know very well, Pat, I always have my tea early on a Wednesday before I go to the Derby and Joan Club. Well, next time you go, get one of those old Jones to marry you. Let her try looking after you. Now, don't start flying off the handle at me again. Wasn't much I asked you to do for me. Just a couple of pork chops. Oh, yes, and some soup. Hot roll and butter, pineapple, stuffing and roast potatoes, all at a minute's notice. You see, I'm working under great difficulties, Father. I've lost my magic wand. All right, if that's your attitude, I'll cook my chops myself. Where are we? In the dustbin. <laughs> dustbin? What do you mean? I had an accident. I put the chops under the griller, and while I was waiting for them to cook, the teapot was on the table, so I thought I'd have a cup of tea. But what's all this got to do Please with... Please don't interrupt. I put the tea leaves in the teapot, picked it up to pour the hot water in, and... It just came to pieces in my hand. You mean you broke it? I mean what I said, it fell to bits in my hand. The tea ran all over the stove, and the next thing I knew, your chops were floating down the draining board. <laughs> I just finished cleaning up the mess. And I've got to be out in half an hour, and I suppose this means I'll have to go without my tea. Don't panic, it's all right. The chef has never let you down yet. I'm going to do some bacon and eggs. Oh, all right then. <laughs> Mother, Mary Parker's got some tickets for a fashion parade in town, but it means being there by seven. I'll have to have my tea right away. Oh, but of course, dear young lady, I am your slave. Your slightest wish is my command. Oh, no. What's the matter this time, Grandad? She broke the... The teapot broke itself <laughs> while she was cooking my chops, and she's only just finished cleaning up the mess. And if you're after a quick bacon and eggs, get behind me, because I'm first in the queue. Oh, no, this is the limit. Well, I suppose I'll have to get some tea in town. Don't you adopt that tone to me. And don't you go taking it out of Susan. Hello, happy family. Here I am again. <laughs> so I see, and I suppose you want a meal right away as well. Me? I'm in no hurry for a meal, ma'am. Good, because the way things are going, you're not likely to get one. Now, who's gone and upset you, ma'am? Has the Coleman trod on your auntie run and her items again? <laughs> Your mother's annoyed because we both want an early tea and she broke the teapot. For the last time, I poured the hot water in it and it just... All came... right, I heard you the first time. If you can't speak to me properly, don't speak at all. I might do just that. Not that it'll do any good. I'll still have to listen to all your moans and complaints from you and her ladyship here. Look, if it bothers you all that much, I won't say another word. No, and I won't either. Good. That's fine, then. I'm not talking to you and you're not talking to me. Right? <coughs> and they gone quiet. <laughs> Jimmy, would you ask those two persons if they'd like sausage with their bacon and egg? Hey? Oh, all right. Jim to Grandad and Susan. <laughs> Mam wants to know if you want bangers with your bacon. Over. <laughs> Not for me, thank you. Not for me either. Jim to ma'am, you can cross bangers off the menu. Roger and out. <laughs> hey, I hope we're still not going to be like this on Saturday at the Autumn Fair. <laughs> still, we'll all be friends by then. <laughs> well, well, I 
say something if he's only belt up. I know one thing. These two will probably put on quite an act at the church hall on Saturday with everybody watching. They might even treat me like a human being. Well, if that's what you think, don't worry about what I'll do. Because I won't be going. And neither will I. I'm going to get changed. I'm going out. That does it. That just about does it. Hey, what's up, ma'am? Your ears have gone purple. <laughs> I finished with them, the ungrateful thing. Oh, never mind about them, ma'am. We can still have a lot of fun at the fair, just the two of us, if you bring enough money. <laughs> what? Go to the fair? Huh. It'll be just like being here. I'll spend all my time looking after other people instead of enjoying myself. I'm not going either. You mean I've got to go on my own? I mean, you're not going. There's enough trouble without you breaking up the fair, not to mention telling everybody why we're not there. Oh, Mum, I wouldn't tell anyone. You're not going, and that's final. Now, look, there's half a crown. Go and get yourself some fish and chips. But you're cooking me tea, aren't you? No. The chef's gone on strike. For once, I'm going to be waited on. I'm going to a cafe for a meal, then I'm going to the pictures. And you can tell them not to wait up for me, because I might just decide to go to a nightclub. Oh, ma'am! I didn't know, because the front door went up. Oops! Please, get out of the way, Alfie. There's a good boy. Hey, your mum's in hurry. Where's she going? She's gone to a nightclub. <laughs> Look, it's a long story, Alfie, so sit down and listen. It goes back as far as last Sunday, when the vicar was here, saying how happy we all were together. And it all came to a head less than an hour ago, when she broke the teapot and... I'm very worried about it. Why? She didn't break the teapot. It was me. You were... <laughs> How about you just said? I broke it this morning when they were all out and I stuck the bits together with the stuff I use for mending punctures. <laughs> <laughs> that stuff wouldn't hold the teapot together once you put hot water in it. Now it tells me. <laughs> oh, fed up, Alfie. They've fallen out so I can't go to the autumn fair. Ah, oh, well, I am sorry. I know what it's like because my mum once fell out with my dad over a bit of skirt. No, not a woman, a piece he tore out of my mum's frock when he was practising throwing his fishing line. She belted him with his rod. Presents bring them together again. Presents? What do you mean? Well, my mum bought my dad half a bottle of rum and he bought her some of her favourite lavender water. But they didn't. Alfie, I've heard of people talking pigeon English. But yours is cuckoo oldham. <laughs> I said they didn't because I bought the presents and left them lying about and they both bought each other was trying to make friends with the other one. Yeah, I see. Give each other their favourite presents. Now, what does me grandad love most? Oh, yeah, but she'd never buy him beer. <laughs> Now, listen to me, before the vicar comes to the door, how much are we going to tell him? You're going to tell him nothing. Just keep quiet. I'll chat up his reverence. He's always saying, I look upon you all as my children. Well, he can come and sort out his three daft kids who live with me. <laughs> well, I suppose he is the best one to pour the oil on. Pour the oil on the vicar? You know, on the water when it's troubled. They pour it on. Well, they don't really. It's just a saying, like, when the sea's rough, you pour it on and, and people become friends because it calms the water. Alfie, have you got a handkerchief? Yeah. Well, gag yourself. <laughs> Hello there, James and Alfred. How are you? He's not too well. He's got water on the brain. Shut up. <laughs> now, now, James, don't be naughty. Sorry, Vicar, but I'm very upset. You see, my mum isn't speaking to me granddad or our Susan. And I don't like them not being friends, and I want you to come and talk to them. Oh, I see. Well, James, I don't normally care to interfere in family uh, disagreements. I find that the uh, outsider is rarely welcomed. You didn't say that on Sunday when you came for your tea. I beg your pardon? Well, I mean, they were nice to you. Ah, you misunderstand me, James. I mean that family quarrels should be settled within the family. Y you were right, Vicky. Well, I've tried. I had a marvellous idea. My mum loves chocolates and my granddad loves strawberries. So we gave my mum some chocolates and said they were from my granddad and gave him strawberries and pretended they were from my mum. Well, well, well. Ingenious, but uh, rather expensive, wasn't it? Oh, I didn't care what it cost. No, not what I was paying. 
You should have paid twice the way you ruined everything. Oh, what exactly went wrong? Well, the boy wonder here messed it up. He bought me mum's chocolates, but took the wrong box off the shop counter. It was a dummy. The chocolates were made of wood. <laughs> <laughs> my mum nearly broke her tooth. <laughs> then I put the strawberries in a bowl, told Alfie to get the cream out of the fridge, and he poured it all over the strawberries. It wasn't till my granddad took a mouthful that we found out that the cream was salad cream. <laughs> <laughs> I should have seen his face. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. And what did your grandfather say, James? Well, it wasn't love thy neighbour. <laughs> he said he'd never speak to me mum again. But, uh, surely you told him the truth. You must be joking. <laughs> I mean, I daren't. If he'd known it was Alfie, he'd have tied his legs in a sailor's knot. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he would, you know, because he was a sailor, you know. Oh, shut up. Well, James, I am sure that this will all blow over in a few days. That's no use. They've got to be friends by Saturday. Why Saturday? So they'll take Jimmy to the autumn for home, <laughs> So they'll all be friends when they take me to church on Sunday. You wouldn't want them fighting in the middle of your sermon, would you? Yes, uh, highly commendable, I'm sure. Look, James, I would like to help. Oh, good old vicar. I mean, uh, thank you, sir. I said I would like to help to uh, come over and uh, see if I could uh, pour a little oil on the troubled waters. Yeah, that's it, you see, Jimmy, that's what I said, the oil on the water when there's trouble. N now he said it so the vicar wants gagging. I mean... Uh... <laughs> what was that? Oh, take no notice, vicar. He gets carried away sometimes, usually when there's a full moon. <laughs> anyway, when will you come, vicar? I am not coming. I said I would like to help, but I do not feel that this uh, problem is my uh, concern. But you're supposed to stop trouble, to make people nice to each other. Ah, by exhortation, not by prying into private matters that are none of my business. What about the Black Hang Gang? You're not a member of that, but you're always sticking your nose into t telling us to behave. No. <laughs> now that is enough. I cannot help you. So all that stuff you were telling us is just a lot of guff. Guff? Jazz, then. You do just come for the chocolate cake. <laughs> Enough. I abhor violence, but at this moment I am sorely tempted to chastise you most severely. Go, clear off before I lose control of myself completely. Ma'am, that's that clever boy. And you're lucky he didn't clout you with a font. Oh, <laughs> shut up. I hope he gets woodworm in his organ loft. <laughs> oh, dear. Two days to the blooming fair and they hate each other more than ever. Oh, who's this now? Hope it's Aussie. I feel like clouting somebody. <laughs> Hello, Jim. Oh, it's you. Come in. I could do with a laugh. Mm. Yeah, are you Susan in? No, she's out. They're all out. And that's where I wish I was, out of the country. Oh, now, Jim, you'll just have to accept it. You won't be going to the fair. I'm not giving up yet. There must be something I can do. Well, I don't know what to suggest. You know, it makes you think, doesn't it? They want the Russians and the Yanks and the Chinese to be friends. Well, how can you expect them to agree when your man won't even speak to your granddad and Susan? You what? You can't blame me, ma'am, for all that trouble. <laughs> she doesn't even know any Russians or Chinese. <laughs> I don't mean her. I, I mean, if all the people in families all over the world talk to each other, then they'd, they'd talk to others, and, and then they'd, they'd, they'd talk to the, the rest, and they'd, they'd all be talking, like I'm talking to you. I see you mean they'd all be talking a load of rubbish. Yeah, no. no I, I mean... If everybody talked... Nobody would listen. Exactly. Oh, shut up. I don't know why I talk to you. Because you want the Russians to be friends with the Yanks. <laughs> see, you're too young to understand international situations. You see, they, they were all right in the war because they were fighting with us against the Germans and the Japs. And, and my dad said people here were all friendly and they didn't fall out like your lot have. But after the war started, they all started off again. Oh, that's the answer then. What? Well, We've got to start a war before Saturday. <laughs> I mean, people unite against a common enemy. Well, we forget our little quarrels when we're faced with a bigger quarrel. And when we're threatened from outside, we join together. 
side by side. And we ain't got, got a battle of money. Hey, will you shut up? Very good, Alfie. You ought to put up for Parliament. You are? As an independent twit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, look here. Just a minute. You've given me the answer, Alfie. You're asking... Have I? Yeah. The common, common enemy. If my mob had somebody they all hated, a common... A common... <laughs> a common enemy, like you said, they'd all be friends again. Well, yes, you're right. If... Now, now, wait a minute. What common enemy would they have? You! I mean, my granddad thinks you're common already. <laughs> I mean, just like... Yeah, look, I'm not having Susan falling out with me. All right, chicken. I'll just have to get them all to hate me somehow. Well, that shouldn't be difficult. Just be your usual cheeky self. <laughs> <laughs> a quarter of an hour ago to go those messages. The shops will be closed in ten minutes. Just putting my shoes on, Mum. It's all right, don't worry. Alfie's going to run me down to the shops. Yeah, am I? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, yeah. Just run me down. I'll make my own way back. Look, Alfie isn't here just to run you around. Ah, it's all right, Mrs. Clither. I'll be back in two minutes. And Susan's not ready yet. Oh, very well. I'll just put the kettle on and have a cup of tea ready for when you get back. Good lad, Alfie. Well, come on, then. No, we can't go yet. Not till they hate me. And Susan hasn't started the trouble yet. Susan? What are you talking about? Oh, I see you're here, Alfie. Yeah, but would you go in just as soon as Susan starts a trip? As, as soon as Jimmy's wrecked, I mean, to, to hate the shop, to go to the shops. <laughs> I don't know why I bother. <laughs> Won't be long now. That was Susan screaming. No, what's frightened her? She probably looked in the mirror. But that would do. <laughs> All right, all right, I'll go and kill it. Oh, it's outside. It was in my shoe when I picked it up. I just threw it out of the window. Well, you might have damaged the mouse, you fool. Damaged the mouse? Yeah. They're only made of plastic, you know. Oh, well, it could have... You what? You little horror. You monster. I'll fish Susan's talking to you. Oh, what was it? it... <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, Not I... you. That brother of mine put a toy mouse in my shoe. You little delinquent. I hate you. Oh, good. <laughs> One down, two to go. <laughs> oh, she's got no sense of humour. Can't take a joke. Oh, I don't think it's a joke. I don't think it was funny at all. <laughs> I'm not surprised. You didn't even laugh at the strawberries I gave you with salad cream on. What? <laughs> oh, Axe. You mean they weren't from your mother? Of course not. Right. Come here, you little joker. I'll give you something to laugh at. Help! What's going on? Leave him alone, Father. I'll leave him alone after he's been across my knee. He can't take a joke, uh, Mum. Well, it wasn't really a joke about the strawberries. It was like your wooden chocolates. Oh, yes, your granddad's idea of a joke. What? No, he didn't send them, Mum. They were my idea. Only it was... It was only to make up for your teapot. My teapot? Yes, the one I broke and stuck together again. Only as soon as you put the hot water in it, it came unstuck again. What? You mean you did it, you little villain? That does it. Oh, you're going to be sorry this time, my lad. Yes, well, I can't, can't stop. We've got to go to the shops, haven't we, Alfie? Oh, goodness, yes. They'll be closed in a minute. He's not getting away with this. Don't worry, Father, he won't. Jimmy, off to the shops. Yes, Mum. And straight back and straight up to bed. Yes, Mum, as soon as I've had my supper. There's no supper for you. Now off you go. Yes, Mum. Come on, Alfie. Right, quick. And think yourself lucky to get off so easy. Yes, ma'am. Oh, uh, Grandad. <laughs> Alfie. Well, it worked. They hate me. <laughs> You're not kidding. So now they'll all be friends again and we'll all go to the fair. You're crackers. They won't take you anywhere. Except onto the roof to throw you off. <laughs> you just said so yourself. They hate you. Yes, that's now. But they'll soon forgive me when they find out how ill I am. You what? Well, you're not ill. No, but I will be tomorrow morning. <laughs> Come in. Come in. You, you, you 
Mum said I could come up and see you, Jim. Oh, yeah. That's all. Oh, heck, it's you. Shut the door. Hey, what's going on? I don't want to tell you that. I'm ill, so they're all nice to me again. Even Scraggy Nick. But you're all right. Of course. I just used a bit of sneezing powder, put the thermometer on my hot water bottle and did me Dr. Kildare bit. <laughs> I've got a cold in me dose and I can't say plug jab. <laughs> yeah, you're a little monkey. Yeah, and I'm all there with me nuts. <laughs> well, now we're all friends. Uh, we'll be going to the autumn fair. I can't wait to hear the vicar. Welcome, a brethren. Eyes down and bless this housey housey. <laughs> Ah, Jimson, some nice hot milk. Oh, thanks, Bob. Uh, half and me were just talking about the fair, about all the things I'll take him on. Oh, I'm afraid you can't do that. Oh, it's all right, Mum. We'll use his money. Oh, no, I didn't mean that. You won't be able to go to any fair. Oh, but we're, we're friends, all of us. Well, that's not the point, no. I couldn't possibly let you go out with your bad cold. What? But... Uh, I'm all right. I, I mean, better. I, I feel fine now. I'm sorry. It's out of the question. But, ma'am... no use. You can't go, and that's final. Now I must go. I've got the lunch off. I've all the rotten twists. <laughs> After all I've done. Yeah, well, you've been just too clever this time, haven't you? Come on, belt up. You're going, aren't you? Yeah, I'll be taking Susan. But I didn't have the clever idea of pretending to be ill. No, I could have gone if I'd been like you. Y you mean fit? No, I mean stupid. There's no justice. <laughs>